Is there something you've had your eye on, but maybe you've decided not to buy it just yet? Well, guess what? National Splurge <laughs> Day is coming up. It's on June 18th. Mark your calendars. All right. So can we splurge on that day? Local financial instructor Michael Mazarad joins us from the Retirement Education Foundation. Back with some questions we need to ask ourselves before we make a big purchase or maybe even a medium-sized purchase, Michael. Well, this is the fun part about budgeting we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Because if we do the budgeting all year long, now when National Splurge Day or whatever event comes up and we budgeted for it, go ahead, spend it. That's the fun, that's the fun part of budgeting. But really, there are three questions when it comes to Splurge Day or whatever event you want to spend the money on. Or any on. Wednesday. Or, or any Wednesday. <laughs> right. So number one, can I afford it? Now, a lot of people, when they think about can I afford it, they think, do I have my credit card on me? That's not the question. Mm -hmm. The question is, do I have the cash saved up for this somewhere? Yeah. That's number one. Not going into debt for something, not dipping into the emergency fund for something that is not an emergency, but can I afford this? Number two is, is this going to derail my savings plan? So here's the checklist. If we have at least three months of expenses in a savings account, ideally six, but at least three. If we're saving 15% or more to your, to your retirement accounts, if we have the bills paid, then the answer is yes, go ahead and do these things. But if we don't have that stuff covered first, don't splurge, splurge next year. Let's get that stuff mm. taken care of first. Mm. And then the third thing really is, is will this make me happy? A lot of people spend a lot of money on materialistic things only to find that the happiness wears off after a week or two. You, you buy a new car, you buy new clothes, you buy something brand new, it's, it's fun for the first week or two and then it's just, no, that's, that's my car, you know. I mean, psychologically speaking, that happens almost to everybody every time, doesn't it? When you read the psychology of money, uh, I mean, the, the if, impact of that initial purchase right. and whatever it is that, that hit your brain takes. There's that immediate burst of happiness yeah. from pushing the purchase button and then the, the, the burst comes again when it shows up at your door, but then it wears off. Yeah. A lot of people find that they enjoy spending money more on the experiences with friends or family than materialistic things. Mm. Are there any rules maybe you can give if how to weigh the pros and cons? For example, a new TV, maybe I could tell myself, but I'm going to use this every day. Like I'm going to really get my money's worth out of this compared to maybe golf clubs where it's seasonal uh, For sure. and I don't know how to golf. You and know. really, so it, it all comes down to what do you think will give you the most happiness? And that is for a lot of people, you know, what do I tend to use the most in my life? If someone golfs once per year, yeah. those brand new golf clubs for the one golf outing per year probably isn't worth it. Mm -hmm. But if you're a big movie junkie or a big TV junkie and you, and you watch TV every single day, upgrading the TV might be worth it more than the golf clubs. Michael, how do we, how do you coach people on resisting impulse purchasing? Mm. Because it's just with, between now there's TikTok marketplace and you know, all the apps seem to be selling you something <laughs> it's so easy. Is there a, a pause that you take, you count to 10, what do you do? Well, really, it, it comes down to having a plan because if we're just waking up every single day with no plan for the day or for the week or for the month or for the year, we're not going to succeed at anything we're trying to do. So having a plan, having a direction, having a goal, so that when we come across that really awesome sweatshirt we see on TikTok shop or whatever, that's a, it's a very cool sweatshirt, that's awesome. But you know what, I don't have spending $85 on a sweatshirt in right. my budget for this month. So mm -hmm. if I really do want it, I'll mark that down for the budget for three months from now, start saving 25 bucks a month, 30 bucks a month, and I'll get there. Even the pitfalls of you don't even have to take out your card really on some of these social right. media sites and type it in. I mean, all of those things that we used to use, my phone, uh, my purse is upstairs, so I'm not going to get up and go get right. the wallet to type it's it in. Built in. Now you just Found side this. click on, on your phone, boom. What have I done? And it, it is good to have those things on your phone just in case for an emergency. Yeah. But if you are someone who is impulsive, maybe take those credit cards off the phone because it's easier, or at least like off you the said. Shopping sites. Yeah, or at least off the shopping sites because yeah. you're right. It's very easy to double click on the side, it does the face scan, and purchase your good. Man. Mm -mm -mm. Michael, just real quick, remind us. Uh, it, big picture, when you're trying to allocate funds, you're saving 20%, 10%? So once we've got the emergency fund, the three to six months of expenses built up, yeah. then we're shooting for at least 15% into the retirement accounts. 15% or more if we can. More is fantastic. Okay. And three to six months in your emergency fund. Mm -hmm. All right. We got have it. work to do, people. <laughs> Thank you. Always good to have you on. Of course. For more information, you can visit our links on foxydetroit.com and find this information.